In this database, these four tables have the exact same redundant data structure. Let's fix that. We'll start by consolidating. And then we'll write some VBA to create tables and fields from structure we planned in Excel. We use a with block, a do loop, and we'll test with if. And we'll also make append queries. Lots of fun. Hi, this is Crystal. This example is the Northwind database that you can create for yourself from a template when you make a new database. How to do this is covered in my Northwind Relationships video. We'll make a new database, but a blank one. I like to set a couple options. Autocorrect off. Display is overlapping windows. Autocorrect off takes a few steps so it sticks. We can link to the tables in the Northwind template. New data source from database, access, and browse to the Northwind template database. Change the connection type to link instead of import. Select all tables and then OK. All the tables have a right pointing arrow in the icon next to the data sheet to show they're linked. This page on my website, Document Access Tables to Excel, has code to document the data structure of an access database to an Excel workbook, where it's easy to move around and modify. With all the definitions in one place, I can compare them in each of the four redundant tables. Customers, employees, shippers, suppliers. Aside from exactly the same data structure, what do these four tables have in common? They're all contacts. A contacts table can be created to consolidate the records into one table. Each contact can be a particular type. Sometimes a person is more than one thing. That's true, and a developer would create more tables. I used Excel to do the planning. Select the range, copy it, then go to Access and paste the selection into the navigation pane. That makes a new table in Access. Access asks if the first row of data contains the field names, and it does. I could have linked to Excel, but I want to modify the structure and edit the data. After creating a new table by importing, it's a good idea to fix data types and other glaring property problems. Max size was calculated by my tool, and it's a whole number. It's the maximum length of all of the field values. Text fields always come in at 255, with the at sign for the format code indicating it's text, which should be removed because it is a text field. The maximum size of a table or field name in Access is 64 characters. That's still, of course, entirely too long. But that will be the limit here as well. I like to set Unicode compression to yes, unless there's a reason not to, and it's always no. But it's yes when you make new text fields using the Access UI user interface. New size is an integer. Actually, that's not right. I think now it's a long in some cases. The new description will be 255, although that's really way too long for a field description. We might put other information in there. <laughs> Comment will also be 255, the maximum length for a short text field. Data may be lost, but nothing in this table. Save and close. Now... Let's write some VBA to make tables with the definitions. Since this is a table of defs, 
and TDF is often an abbreviation for table def, I'm going to add an auto number PK to this table called TDF ID. In the code, we need object variables for the current database, a record set with the table definitions, a table def object for a new table, and a field object for a new field. I've dimensioned a few variables and maybe we'll need more. S table name is the string variable to hold the name of the table that's being created. SSQL is for SQL statements. SMSG is for message. Then there are two integers to count how many fields and how many tables were created. That means there can't be more than 32,567 fields. I don't think there'll be that many. The table I imported from Excel is called New Table Depths. This SQL statement gets all the fields in the table, where T is the alias of the longer table name. Sort order is by table name and then the field index number. A record set is opened with that information. In each row there's a table name and a field name. The table name may or may not be the same as the table name on the next record. While we are at the end of the current record set, EOF means end of file and basically end of the records. We'll leave space to do something, then move to the next record in the record set and loop back to the beginning to do again if there's another record. This loop will continue until there aren't any more records to process. We'll keep track of the table name, which might be the same or a different one. It will be initialized to be a zero length string. At some point, we'll set the table name variable to the table name in the record set. First, let's see if the table name in the record set changed. If it did, we want to start a new table definition. Set our table def object to the results of create table def sending the new table name. Likewise, we can create a field in that table using create field, sending the field name and the data type. When the field is created, it's stored in an object called OFLD, or OField. If the field is short text, its type is 10. Then we can also specify the size. Lots of references are made to the record set we're looping through. And each time we reference something from the record set, it starts with RS. By putting with RS above and end with below, we can take RS out of all the references. And that also gives the code better performance. Search for RS bang. Replace with bang in the selected text. Now the code takes less horizontal space and is easier to read. After the field object is created, it has to be appended to the table. End the F to test for a new table name. Each record will always have a new field to create. Decrease the indent for these lines since they're not now in the new if table block. This isn't the place to put setting the description where it will stick, but we'll do it here for now. That's kind of the general skeleton. Now we'll go and adjust this block of code. At the top of the loop, if we aren't on the first table, then we'll need to append the one getting defined to the table defs collection before we create another new table def. 
increment the I count field and I count table variables in the code when new fields and new tables are created. They should initialize to zero automatically. This makes it clear. After the loop is done, the last table will have to be appended. Refresh the table defs collection and refresh database windows so the new tables show in the navigation pane. Do events makes it do it now. I don't know if that's necessary. I like to write the error handler lines at the top where I can see the procedure name, which I just copied to the clipboard, and the object variables. If there's an error, execution will go to the statement following the proc error line label. A message box will display with the error description, the error number, and the name of the procedure. Then it will go to the exit code. The exit code releases object variables. Since the record set was opened, it might need to be closed. If we try to close the record set and it's not open, an error will occur. Therefore, the exit code will skip errors by changing the error handling to on error resume next. The last statement in the exit code is to exit the procedure before it accidentally slips into the error handler and gets error zero. <laughs> Now the exit and error handling code get moved to the end. This module only has this procedure. I copy the name, but the module name has to be different. So it will start with mod underscore, and then I'll paste the procedure name. Debug compile. Because option explicit is on, a compiler catches the variables that aren't declared. Ah. <laughs> And it's wrong. TDF should be OTDF. I used to use TDF, but now I put a little O in front to mean object. Hmm, loop without a do. Is that the right error message? The do loop looks okay. Somewhere I probably forgot an end if. Where is it? Does it go there? No. Ah, <laughs> so the error was right. Loop without a do. I forgot the word do. Sometimes these error messages really do tell us the error. Compile and save the module. When the procedure is done, the user will get a message with how many fields and tables were created. Debug, compile, save, and run. First problem. The SQL statement specifies all fields from table with an alias of T. So the table needs to say that's its alias. <laughs> okay, you don't have to use the word as, but it does make things more clear. I didn't do it here. Now run. Done. Created 22 fields in two tables. Let's go look. The contacts table is just as defined. The code that ran is simple, and we still need to do a few things. The default value for the date time a record was added is some function that gives us current date and time now. Okay, we'll have to make some other changes like setting auto number and primary key. And the same changes to the contacts type table. When I made this definition, I abbreviated the contact type ID, but I think it might be better to spell it out to make it clear. The different contact types are added. Ah. I see this version didn't get field descriptions. Remember I said that code would have to move? I'll do them manually. Just go to the first field, Control C to copy the field name, Tab Tab to get to the description, Control V to paste, then Tab to the next field. So that's Control C, Tab Tab, Control V, Tab. And you just keep on doing that until you're done with the table. 
doesn't take very long. Later we can fix the descriptions. Field descriptions are important because they'll become status bar text when controls using those fields are added to forms. And that's a good way to show the user where you are. Now it's time to append the data. First, we'll get the data from customers, make a new query, add the customers table, put all the fields on the grid, and change the query type to an append query. Oh, we need a place for the original ID so that related data can be hooked up. Okay, so we go back to the contacts definition and make a field called import ID. It's a long integer with no default value. Save and close contacts. Back in the append query, access doesn't know we just changed that. So we'll pick the contacts table again, and access will see the new field. The ID field in customers is put into this new import ID field. When I first made the list of fields, I left out the contact type ID foreign key. I'll add it now and pick contacts so that access sees the new field. Since the data structure is exactly the same as customers for employees, it's quick to go to the SQL and specify that employees is now the source table, still using an alias of T. And here's another good reason to use aliases. It's much easier to substitute the table names. It's quicker to find the contact type ID on the grid than the SQL statement. So we'll switch to design and run it. Oh, and I ran the first one too. And now we do the same thing for shippers and suppliers. Change the source table name in the SQL, change the contact type ID on the grid, and run it. Now the contacts table has all the contact records from the four Northwind tables with contact information. The contact type ID in contacts is a foreign key to primary key of contact type ID in the contact types table. As you build tables, you should also build the relationships. Let's open the relationships diagram, clear that awkward layout, Add contact types and contacts for two new tables. Resize the field list to show everything. And make a relationship with referential integrity from the contact types table where the data starts to the contacts table on the contact type ID. I fixed the code that creates the tables, so now it does get the field descriptions. The trick to make this work is to loop through and set properties after the table is appended. So essentially we have two loops. One loop goes through the definitions and makes everything, and then the next loop goes through all the newly created stuff and sets properties. In addition to the field description, Unicode compression is being automatically set to yes if the data type is 10 or 12, which is short text or long text, respectively. There! 
there it is, two different tables instead of four that are the same. We also covered some VBA, so now you can do more looping and action queries. If you're building a database with contact information and it's important to structure it well, here are a couple free examples you can download, use, and study. My Contacts is a light version of contact information. Everything is in one database. Contacts has a lot more tables and is split into front end and back end. It also manages users and has other features not in the light version. Both are free on msaccessgurus.com. If you want private tutoring to fix a database or build a database, let's connect. I love to help those who want to learn. Thanks for joining me. Through sharing, we'll all get better.